my door Blue whale Come on now, give me some more I see the people who stare at the sky And wish one day that you walk by Oh, blue whale What are you waiting for? It's too late to say goodbye, my friend. Well, it's too late, and you know that this is the end. I hear the cries of the young and the old, and what they say, you must do what you're told. Now it's too late. and welcome to the show. Hope you all had a great time at homecoming this weekend. Speaking of dances, Taylor, did you hear they're changing Sadie's to a Halloween dance? No. -uh. I swear. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna faint. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Rachel, where did you come from? I heard you guys were talking about Sadie's and I'm actually writing a story about it for the website. No way, tell me more. So basically, Sadie's is now gonna be a Halloween dance. And the reasoning behind that is because there wasn't a lot of people that came to Sadie's and no one really seemed interested in it, so we, the administration and the student council thought that they'd switch it up, and everyone's going to be able to wear their Halloween costumes, and there's going to be karaoke called scary -oke. There might be a movie playing in the auditorium so people, so people could like take a break during the dancing and fun, and it's going to be a good time. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah. Where am I? Have we started the first story yet? Oh, well, I'm pretty sure it was about Generations Coffee Shop in Columbiana. You should check it out. It's pretty cool. Uh, hello, my name is Christian Schwartz. Um, I run Generations Coffee House here in Columbiana, Ohio. Uh, it's my wife. My wife was the coffee drinker. I was not. And um, she just got me into coffee in a way that wasn't boring, like just your usual just like pot of coffee. Um, Pour over methods, it's a handmade coffee. Just like really got into my nerdy side of myself and uh, it was so interesting. I, I haven't stopped learning from it yet. Um, there's a book called The Great Good Place. A sociologist put it out. Um, I'm gonna forget his name. But anyway, he uh, wrote this book based on just this understanding he was coming to of how our lives become increasingly uh, categorized and how you know we work here and we live here and we play here and and there's no overlap and he felt like that was a detriment to to our overall joy and happiness and, and community and so we modeled ourselves after is what he called the great good place or the third place that um, it was a place for all of those things like yes it's my job but I have friends here and um, and in a sense I live here and I want the people that come in to see it as that way too. This isn't um, necessarily just a place you come to do work or just a place you meet with friends or just a place that you have coffee um, but it's kind of a blank space for you to treat it the way that you would want. Um, just really relaxed atmosphere. A lot of coffee shops are known for that but the, the idea is just to be community oriented. Uh, the biggest thing would be our pour overs. The way that we treat coffee is that um, we bring it in as what's called single origin, as opposed to the blends that you get in most shops. Um, our coffees each come from specific countries, usually even specific farms, and so we treat it a little more like wine than like traditional coffee. Um, we make a big deal about where it's from and that it tastes differently because of that. And then when we bring it into the shop and brew it, we treat it differently as well. It's not just coming out of a pot, but we brew it by hand. Or um, even our espresso is made in a different way than most shops and it's done very manually and with a lot of intention and focus and recipes. And uh, so it, you could also see it more as like a, like 
craft beer as opposed to a Budweiser. There's just more of a science and, and passion behind it. Like recently we're working on wholesaling our cold brew. So we actually, um, our iced coffee, we brew it and we bottle it and we send it out to other companies to sell at their place, kind of like um, soda or beer or wine. Like you can get Generations cold brew, not just at Generations, but maybe if you go to not sparkle, but you know, if you go to some other place, you can get our product there. So we're working on a little more of a wholesale program uh, in that respect right now, which is, I guess, an example of that. My favorite drink, uh, I've got, I've got two, um, and I can't choose between the two, honestly. There's, there's just the, the pour over. It's just a cup of coffee, but it's like I was saying, we brew by hand. Um, it'll, uh, it'll just change your mind about coffee. Um, but also, I really do like uh, milk drinks and espresso, and so the Cortado is kind of like a, a tiny latte. Like, you taste more coffee than a latte, but you still have the milk. Um, and that's my favorite espresso drink, so I've got just like coffee and espresso, and I'll never know which one I like more. Okay, I guess I'm doing the jelly bean challenge. I'm, I'm a little nervous. My stomach's what color like is it? butterflies. You guys are scaring me. Um, I don't know, it's like a cream colored. So, I don't know, here it goes. What's it taste like? What's it onions? Taste like? Oh. <laughs> Wait, what does it that taste? Was, it tastes like onions, it was gross. Just pick a random one. It's a good one. What does it taste like? Strawberry. Oh, do another one? one? I don't want to do another one. One more, one more. All right. Oh. Just got oh. <laughs> what does it taste like? Baby powder. <laughs> okay, you ready? Are we going? Okay. Oh, you're so gross. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. What is that? I don't what even did know what it is. Me? Oh. I can't. That tasted like dog food. I was just going to yeah, say that. Yeah, I was going to say that. No, 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 no. Tastes what? like markers and poop. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was chocolate at first, but it wasn't chocolate. It was definitely not chocolate. With the new art galleries, the M Gallery and the Soap Gallery opening in downtown Youngstown, the art communities are thriving. One man, Jim Pernato, has been creating art in Youngstown for many years. We checked in with him at his art studio in downtown Youngstown to learn about him, his art, and the downtown art scene. Yeah, the one thing that I thought that was nice when I saw this, they look like DNA splitting, you know? So, you know, I kind of wanted to have that idea, you know, of, uh, two molecules like coming together and splitting, you know. So, so that's, that's where I'm at. Where do you get your inspiration from? Everything. Yeah. And I really do. I, uh, you know, I think, I think that's the, uh, the difference between art and science, is that science is a kind of a thing where you become more and more and more specific about, you know, the, the problem that you're dealing with and so you know but art works in the opposite direction if you become broader and broader and more inclusive and want to get your ideas from every kind of uh, medium that, that I explore uh, you know they're interconnected and uh, you know I dealt with paper making for a very long time and uh, you know, so I guess that's why I'm so much interested in paper and the idea about paper, because I made paper from even blue jean cloth from rag, and uh, so that's one thing that interested me. But you know, now I, I like painting on canvas, right. I like sculpture. Why did you decide to have your studio in Youngstown? Um, I was. Um, I, I, I came back here in, uh, right after the uh, mills uh, closed in 79 and uh, the downtown was 
really started to empty out. You know, it was uh, there was a lot still going on, but some of these buildings were spaces were open, and so yeah, I came down and knocked. It was a sign for rent, and I came up here, and this was available. And <laughs> you know, I never thought when I was growing up as a as a young boy that anything would be possible, like having a studio downtown. You can't believe how jammed this was when the steel mills were working. What are your thoughts on the new art galleries opening downtown? Oh, I'm real happy about it. And uh, yeah, it the more the better, too. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i hoping that, uh, you know, would like this building to morph into a contemporary art center and uh, trying to hold down the fort here until you know, that might happen. Is it tough being an artist in Youngstown? Well, it's it's difficult being, a, you know, an artist anywhere. But, you know, I mean, I guess you're specifically asking Youngstown, well, you know, when you're talking about being a career in the arts, you're talking about music, dance, theater, right? Um, and, and in order to have those things, you have to support those things. So if you want the Youngstown Playhouse, you know, to work, you have to be a patron of the Youngstown Playhouse. If you want the Youngstown Symphony to work, you have to be a patron of the Youngstown Symphony. You know, things are getting better. It's becoming a better climate for people to be involved with the arts. And, and where it starts is, is people like you. Okay. <laughs> Hope you guys had a groovy week and make sure to stay tuned for the next episode of the show.